Hi everyone, Namaste. This is a message and an advice for the families who are battling COVID-19 in India in April 2021. The entire world is with you and we, we will battle this and we will get through this together. And, I, and as I say this, I'm very well aware that you're alone at home trying to manage everything. I'm Vaidya Namyata Patak. I'm a BAMS MD in Ayurveda and Kaya Chikitsa, that is internal medicine. And I'm also a Vaidya scientist. I have been teaching and practicing and learning Ayurveda for nearly 20 years now. And for the past six years, I have been in the Bay Area of California. I'm also the education chair of the California Association of Ayurvedic Medicine. And I am on the research boards of certain organizations like um, the Council for Ayurveda Research and the Kasturba Health Society's Medical Research Center located in Mumbai. This message is for people who are struggling with COVID in the first week of infection. The second week of infection, the conversation is different. The support and the advice are different. So first things first, we need to understand the attitude and the mindset with which we are going to battle this infection. We have to know that the current crisis that is existing around is a healthcare system crisis with the limitation of the oxygen, oxygen supplies. This has nothing to do with the way in which we have been able to battle the infection and how our immune system has been able to battle the infection until now. Yes, there are India variants and there are new, new data and new learnings that are emerging every single day. But there are some aspects that are core and we need to be able to have them on our side to be the strength of our armamentarium to fight this infection. So, we want to be in a victory mindset and not in a fear mindset as far as possible. I hope that you are able to plug out all the noise and you're able to focus on what you need to fight this infection. For that topmost priority are sleep and rest and repeated checking the blood oxygen levels and stressing and staying up at night will not do any of us um, a lot of good benefit. If there are more than one, more than one family member who are there um, living together, I suggest that you create turns for caretaking, divide the day up and decide who is going to be up at what time, depending on the nature of care that is required. Please do not everybody stay up at home at the same time. Second, please follow the protocols for, for quarantine and whatever are your local guidelines. Ensure that you're maintaining touch with your uh, medical doctor and following all the instructions and communicating as much as possible, as far as possible. The Fourth most important aspect is to monitor your D-dimer and your blood oxygen level. How often and how frequently to do this, please understand that from your doctor right at the, right at the start. If possible, please get a baseline vitamin D uh, test if it's easily possible and if it is affordable. Ventilation at home is very crucial to ensure that we reduce the viral load. In India, we do live in smaller homes with more, uh, more people in the same space. So if there is only one person who has been infected currently, of course you would quarantine that person, but ensure that you, you ventilate that room 
um, and turn the ceiling fan on, open up the windows while keeping the door closed so that it doesn't come into the house. Try to do this regularly, especially, you know, it, a cue could be when the patient needs to use the bathroom, that's what would occur that you close the door and you ventilate the room to reduce the viral load. Apart from that, do not try to focus too much on trying to prevent yourself from getting the infection because of the, because of the uh, virulence of this agent. We need to be in a slightly different mind space if we have somebody already infected. I suggest, I highly suggest that the asymptomatic family members also follow the Ayurvedic guidelines that I'm going to suggest. So for the person who is COVID positive, you, you want to ensure that you're taking whatever are the antivirals or the medications that your doctor's, doctor is prescribing and follow the standard protocols. Every moment, you can use guided image, imagery to find yourself emerging victorious. Think about your life after you have battled this infection and you've emerged victorious. So you're going to be free, you're going to be immune, you're going to live in a very different world than what you have inhabited in the last year, year and a half. I want you to focus just on that outcome and think and imagine only that outcome in the first week and also in the second week. But especially from the first week onwards, that's the mental conversation that we are going to have because the mind is extremely powerful and it can actualize and it can make things happen. And people call this the placebo effect or they call it the mind effect, but it is a very powerful and an extremely useful effect. It is not pseudoscience. It, is, it has been proven to make the changes that the body needs to ward off the agent. Third, using deep breathing exercises. And I know that there are thousands of videos now, what kind of breathing should one do? And it can be really confusing to identify the one thing that matters the most. From what I have read and researched until now, there are just two aspects that I would like to focus on and one is the Brahmari Pranayama, which is uh, the bumblebee breathing. Please look it up on YouTube or elsewhere. Uh, there, is also an, there is also a video of the Yoga Institute uh, where uh, Hansaji is explaining how to do that Pranayama. Also, there is prone sleeping. That is when you sleep lying down on your belly. And that allows to increase the oxygen, oxygenation level. Um, so that can be used if needed. Third, a fourth part is maintaining high doses of vitamin D3 in your bloodstream, taking 60,000 twice a week for two weeks is what I am suggesting. The normal dose is 60,000 IU weekly in case you are deficient. This is what is suggested only if you're not already taking very high doses of vitamin D and if your uh, vitamin D level is below 50, you can safely take this. Vitamin D has a lot of different data that is emerging, whether it's helping or whether it's not helping but the theoretical rationale and the way in which it supports the immune system and the way in which some studies show that it reduces the need for hospitalization at a higher dose. I think that this is a safe start for the infectious zone. If there is any medical doctor who feels that things should be different, please share that with me and write to me at nami at iu.care and I will update this video and I will post an update to this video if we need to increase, if we can increase or we need to reduce for any particular patient category. 
Ayurvedic medicinal formulations. There are two, there are three suggestions that I would like to make. One is tablet shamsham nivati, which is essentially guduchi extracts of Phenospora cordifolia. You take five to seven grams three times in a day. The other one is um, a tablet Mahasudarshan Kvatam, which is used for general fevers in Ayurveda. Take one gram thrice in a day and take soaked black cumin seeds, one teaspoon in the morning, soak them overnight. The first one, Shamshamni, is an, immu is an immunostimulant. The second one, Mahasudarshana uh, Kvatam, is, has a lot of antiviral agents as well as antipyretic properties. And it helps the body do what the body is trying to do with evoking a fever response, okay? So it's not like taking an antipyretic, which will try to just reduce the fever and keep it under control. But Mahasudarshana helps to fight the fever by helping the fever do what it needs to do. The black cumin seeds are essential also as a sroto shodhana because there is a very different kind of a pathology that is occurring in uh, the COVID-19 infection. The drop in the blood oxygenation level that you see that, you, that occurs without any breathlessness, right? That why is that occurring? It is occurring not because there's a problem in the respiratory apparatus, but most likely, there is, a, there is an issue in the way in which the oxygen is getting transferred to the blood because the blood itself seems to be having some sort of a thrombotic profile in terms of having some sort of clots. So we want to cleanse this blood for that black cumin seeds are my recommendation. Soaked black cumin seeds are my recommendation for anybody with fever. And also any initial symptoms like body ache or fatigue that are setting in. You can begin this protocol at that point of time. For the asymptomatic family members, you can use this protocol in a slightly reduced dose at two-third dosing. This is my other formula that you can see and read about uh, later on. Uh, it has a few components of a complex herbal formulation that can be used by anybody and everybody. And it seems it takes care of different parts of the pathology that are occurring. And all of these ingredients that, are, that I have chosen are safe and they are easily available in India in all of the Ayurvedic shops. I've also written down the dosing and you can prepare it in that way. I want you to avoid some things. So I want you to avoid wheat and dairy. Avoid Chavan Prash. Chavan Prash has been described as an immune supportive for, immun for immunity, but it is not meant for this phase of the infection. Also avoid it for, uh, for the asymptomatic family members. No fried oily, tomato rich or gravied foods. No nuts, no oats, no barley. Try to work on your worry-induced sleep deprivation because I'm seeing that a lot and that really is concerning me because sleep is the most powerful tool that we have to fight the infection. So please listen to some healing chants or do whatever you need to do to allow the universal energy to help you fight this. One chant that I really like is Prana Pana Sushumna Hari, Hari Har, Hari Har, Hari Har, Hari. And that is by meditative mind, where essentially it evokes the universal energy and it connects it inside us. And that's the message and it helps us heal. Foods and water. So what to eat and what to drink. A lot of mung bean based foods, uh, khichdi, soups. Uh, dosa, which are not fermented, but, you know, freshly, fresh batters, um, have them with a lot of vegetables. Pumpkin seeds are excellent because of their zinc content. Have more papayas in terms of fruits 
and apples and pears are also okay. Try to avoid the citrus fruits. Have lots of gourds, that is dodi, loki, a lot of squashes. Some of the root vegetables can be well prepared uh, and boiled and steamed and had with any masala that you like. You don't need to eat bland food. Have food with adequate ginger, coriander, cumin. Make, you make use of all the spices to make the food appealing, but not very masaledar foods. Medicinal waters. So we want, you know, I, I have one recipe written here with boiled coriander seeds and dry ginger. You, you can uh, mix both of this and have, make three to four cups of uh, water and put it in a thermos and keep sipping that water throughout the day. An Ayurvedic medicinal water that's available is also Shadanga Paniya and you can begin using that. For families without any active COVID-19, I request you to please watch my talk on Ayurveda and Immunity, which is there on my YouTube channel. I have just begun making this YouTube channel thanks to all of this post-COVID world crisis. And, uh, and you can leave your comments here in this talk and you can engage into a conversation with me. Ask me what you need. Send me feedback. Send me com comments on what I need to do. Uh, I also invite experts from everywhere to uh, feel free to give me uh, suggestions for this messaging. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go and uh, look at all the other data that is emerging and I'm going to keep giving you updates as soon as I find something that's pertinent and needs to be shared immediately. To keep up with this, please subscribe to the channel and, uh, and keep the conversation going. Let us find and identify the best tools possible 